Kids and have some fun. Who, me? Say, wouldn't I look just too sweet playing with them baby toys? Think you're all grown up and tough, huh? What do you think? I think you're all right, kid. You know that. Nobody's gonna push you around any more than they're gonna push me. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed over, Mr. Brown. Gee, that's what you call flying, huh? I wonder what Tailspin will say. Hey, you kids, watch out what you're doing out there. They haven't started bombing Americans yet. But if they wait until Tompkins' scouts of the air go up, they're apt to get a mighty warm reception. Air scouts? Oh, oh, you mean those kids with the model planes, eh? Yeah, it's a flying club Tompkins got up, and they are using our field. And it's a good idea, too, Mr. Brown. Tommy says it's as natural for kids today to want to fly as to swim or play football. He's teaching them the rudimentary ideas of flying. And he says it may save time. And maybe lives, too, oh, someday. Excuse me, Betty Lou, but I think you're overselling Mr. Brown. And he may not think it necessary to pay his taxes for the support of the Army and the Navy. <laughs> well, Tompkins will be in with your payroll money in a few minutes. Never have to worry when he's on the job. Is that why he's flying transports today? No, not exactly. The regular pilot wasn't feeling well. But a trip now and then helps Tompkins keep his hand in. I suppose so, and with that much money on board and cold, hard cash, it's wise to have a good man at the control. Here comes Tailspin! Yeah, we better scram. You know what Tommy said about keeping the field clear, the planes to land. Where do I get my ship? I tell you kids about keeping the field clear. Johnny didn't do it, Tommy. On the level. We were obeying your orders that Whitey Lewis picked up Johnny's plane and threw it right out in front of you. Johnny couldn't help it, honestly, Tommy. That's right, Tommy. It was that Lewis kid. I saw him. Where is he? Right over there. Beat it, kid. I got a special reason for not wanting no trouble around here right now. He ought to have a good punch in the nose. Here's a buck. I'll be back tomorrow or the next day. Now get going. Okay, Mike. But I just don't want that stuffed eagle to think he can make me go. Go on, get out of here. Here you are, Mr. Brown. 
Sign right here and the money's all yours. Thank you, Tompkins. Don't thank me. This is one time it's a pleasure to get rid of money. Yes, and I'll feel the same when I deliver it to my construction crew up at the dam. I don't like to think about that five-hour drive. It's a mighty rough country between here and there. That's right. Well, good luck. Thanks, Paul. You know, Ash, if you had a landing field up at your camp, I'd talk to you about a deal for Tompkins to fly the payroll all the way. Then you wouldn't have any worry. Maybe not, but Tompkins would. A forced landing up in that country would mean a nasty crack-up. Well, you let us worry about that. We could transfer the money to a small plane here and have it up there in a little more than an hour. Mm, well, maybe a few tractors could clear a landing field. Worth thinking about. All right, think it over. Good luck again. Good luck, Paul. So long again, Tompkins. So long. Oh, Stephen, be ready to move fast. I'm stuck. I guess my battery's dead. Will you see if you can get me started? Up with them. Get out of the car. Step on it. They plugged our tire. So you had this job all figured out so it couldn't mess, eh? Yeah, yeah. How was I... Never mind. Get that tire changed. We've got to get out of here. Yeah. This country will be plenty hot as soon as that guy gets to a phone. You're right, Mike. You know, Paul, that one attempt to hold me up sold me on flying. I've had every spare tractor up at the camp for the last two weeks grading that landing field and it's ready. Well, then Tompkins can make the first trip tomorrow. And be welcome to the job, Paul, believe me. Say, you didn't get a good description of those thugs, did you? No, everything worked too fast. For all I know, one of them might have looked like little Annie Rooney. <laughs> well, they'll have to chase Tompkins pretty high to hijack him. How much you get for this, Cap? This is two dollars, Sonny. It's one of the best kits I've got in the shop. I ain't got that much. I only have a dollar. <laughs> but I have lots of kits for a dollar. Now, like this pursuit ship here. No, I don't want them. Hi, Cap. Hello, Tommy. Did you get that package of parts for my Air Scouts? I sure have. I'll get it right away. It just came in and I haven't had time to unpack it. Why don't you take me a minute? Okay, no hurry. Hi, kid. I said, hi. Don't you speak to people when they say hello to you? No, not the fat heads I don't like. Whoa. You're a lot bigger than me, you big stiff. But if you try to beat me up... What made you think I was going to beat you up? None of your business. Hmm. Pretty tough, huh? Whoa, I'm just trying to feel your muscle. Well, I didn't know. Feel it. That's pretty good. You know, Whitey, I thought I was pretty tough, too, when I was about your age. I had to hustle for myself, and I thought the tougher I was, the more I'd get. I got to hating all the things the other kids had, just because I couldn't have them. Well, I got into a lot of trouble before I started getting smart. And then I started flying, and... How'd you get the job flying? Oh, I did a lot of things. Worked around the field, studied. But it was more... You see, Whitey, you gotta work hard. I had a job, but old man Jenkins fired me. You mean Jenkins down at the grocery store? Yeah, he found out about my pop. He's in stir. In stir? Uh-huh, you know, the big house. Pop was a fighter, see, in the ring. A champ? No, he was never a champ. I, I guess he wouldn't keep in condition. But he had a left hook that was a honey, like this. Pretty good, pretty good. Say, are you going to be a fighter? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe if I can't be a flyer. Oh, you want to be a flyer? Maybe. I guess it'll be okay. Why don't you come out to the field with the kids? No, I ain't got no ship. Hey, you're liable to bust it. 
Oh, I didn't see that. See, that's all right. That ought to make a pretty swell ship. Yeah, I was looking at it. But it's two dollars and I only got one. It is tough. Well, there it is, Tommy. I checked it and there's everything you ordered. Thanks, Cap. So long, kid. So long. Oh, Cap. What did you decide about giving my Air Scouts a half discount? Remember? I asked you. Well, I reckon I can on some of the things. You mean on ones like this? This will be only a dollar? Yes, I guess so. I've had it to stop quite some time, and the box is kind of torn. Here you are. Guess it was kind of lucky you came in. Yes, I guess it was. I'll be out on the field as soon as I can get it together. Thanks a lot, Tommy. So long. So long, kid. <laughs> Nice work, Tommy. So long, Cap. So long. Hey, you kids, you ought to be home. We gotta finish our share. We're just about through. Won't you let us test it tonight? <laughs> Not a chance. This is a swell night for good players to keep their ships on the ground. Now run along. Okay, Tommy. So long. Good night. Well, I've seen some storms in my time, but this one has the air marks of being the granddaddy of them all. Yes, it's gonna be a swell night. Flyers to sit by the fire. You said it. What's the news on Flight 14? Well, they haven't reported in at Twin Rivers yet. So they're going to be groundable. Don't you? Well, that's a trip break. Now, you mean because you're not flying Flight 14 tonight? No, but this is our first trip with the payroll for ground. We're going to be many hours late. Hey, what are you raving about? You haven't got any silly ideas about being out of here tonight, have you? Well, I wasn't thinking about rowing a boat in the park. You didn't have an accident or anything on the way over here, did you? Well, no, why? You talk like a man who'd been dropped on his head. Well, you stop it. The argument's a draw. Anyway, you're both crazy. I resent that. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Listen, Wonder Boy, if you have the luck to get off the ground and get up to the camp against this headwind, how are you gonna land? It'll be black as... Night? It'll be dark, and there's no lights at that field. Well, drop a couple flares. Drop a couple of flares. Listen, they'll point to a hole in the ground tomorrow morning and say, there's where he hit, fellas. Start digging. Well, you two quit it. Anyway, Flight 14's going to be grounded tonight. And you two aviators can go fly a kite. Or, uh, come up to my house for a sandwich. Okay, honey, that's a date. But just the same, if Flight 14 should get through, I'm not going to have that payroll money kicking around here all night. It'd be a swell chance for somebody to grab it. You don't think he's serious. I mean, he won't try. Don't worry, baby. He won't get off the ground tonight unless he licks me first. Yes, I know, Skeeter. We all clown around a lot together, but... I know that in a pinch, you'd give your life to Tommy. Oh, yeah, sure. All nine of them. Pumpkins, it's been a bad slide up at the dam. A bunch of the men are all smashed up. The hospital shack is under tons of rock. I've got to get these medical supplies up to the doctors. Guess you came to the right place. We packed them so they wouldn't break. Well, that was thoughtful. I hate to ask you to do this, but there's no other way. This storm has washed the roads completely out. My car was the last one to get through. Tommy, I don't recommend this, but I'll leave it to your judgment. If you think you can't make it, don't take a chance. Okay. Brian, roll the ship out. Put that in the plane, will you? And I'm going with you. Not a chance. I want to fly light. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going with you. Say, why does everybody think this is an excursion? Oh, Tommy, we'll be careful, won't you? We've got a date tonight, haven't we? Of course. I'll be careful. Three points. QX four seven eight to three points. 
Three point to QX478. Well, well, it's about time you started to think of the old folks at home. How's it going? How's the weather? Your position. Where are you? Position near dam. As near as I can make out. What are you going to do now? Wait until the moon comes up. Point to QX478. Three point to QX478. Come in, Tommy, come in. I'm off the bin, but I must be near the field. What's your feeling? There there isn't any, Tommy. It's it's right on the ground. The center of the storm has hit us. I was in hopes we'd miss the worst of it. Look at that veil. Well, I can hardly see the lights from here. Well, the visibility is zero. Yes, it's it's pretty low. Low? It's right on the ground. Oh, how can any plane land? Can't see a thing, but I'm coming down. Let me know when you hear my motor. You crash sure if he tries that. But we've got to do something, Skeeter. What do we do? I know, I know. I'll talk him down. I'll get him down. Open that door. Tommy! Tommy, I can hear you. You're east of the field. Paul, turn up that speaker.
transmitter. to QX 478. Twin Rivers to QX 478. Go ahead, Tompkins. Lost contact with three point. Can you hear him? No, Tompkins. Lost contact with three point at the same time as you did. Their transmitter went haywire. Okay, Twin Rivers. What's your ceiling? Zero. All planes grounded. Okay, thanks. Couldn't make it anyway. Gas about gone. What's your position, Tompkins? Position on Somewhere east and north of Three Point, I think. That's sure. Gas gone. I'm going over the side. I seem to have mislaid my shoe. We'll try and pancake in. We'll signal every hour on the hour if I'm able to signal anything. Come in, Twin Rivers. Okay, Tompkins. Planes will take off to locate you the minute the ceiling lifts. Okay, Twin Rivers. When you contact Three Point, tell them I may be a little late for a certain date tonight. Now, uh, they'll understand. Okay, Tompkins. Good luck and happy landings. Point to flight 12. Three point to flight 12. Go ahead, flight 12. Blue will run zigzag course from three point to Twin Rivers. No trace of Tompkins plane. Okay, flight 12. Thank you just the same. But I tell you, they ain't looking in the right place. Twin Rivers to three point. Twin Rivers to three point. Come in, Twin Rivers. Three of searching planes just landed. Covered territory north and east of three point. Report no trace of Tompkins. Planes will resume search as soon as service. Thank you, Twin Rivers. But listen to me, please! Flight Commander of Attack Squadron 7 to 3 Point. Flight Commander of Attack Squadron 7 to 3 Point. The Army ships. Come in, Squadron 7. No report on Tompkins. Wreckage of his plane must be so badly scattered it is hard to identify from air. Thank you, Commander. Will you please, please continue search? My orders are to continue search until necessary to return to base field for refueling. Late this afternoon, all hope of finding the lost payroll and mercy flyer Tommy Tompkins alive had been virtually abandoned. Now, ain't that just too bad? Try to cross us up having that eagle fly the payroll and look what happens. Maybe it'd pay us to conduct a search for the plane or uh, what it was carrying. Let's hear the rest of this. A few ships, however, still continue the vain hunt for a glimpse of the shattered wreckage of the Mercy Pilot's plane or the charred remnants of it if it burned in the crash. But it was learned today that pilot Tommy Tompkins did not have the payroll of the Brown Construction Company on board his plane when he crashed last night. Well, what do you think of that? Well, if it wasn't carrying the dough, what are they worried about? Any news? Well, they've all reported. Even the Army squadron. Listen, Skeeter. The last time I heard Tommy's plane, it was going west, it was. I tell you, they ain't looking in the right direction. No, oh, he's been saying that all morning. Well, you're all wrong, kid. Tommy's last report to Twin Rivers said he was east and north of Three Point. He could have been wrong, couldn't he? Anybody could have gotten mixed up in that storm. Didn't a fellow fly east to Europe when he thought he was going west? Yeah, yeah, I know, but his name wasn't Tompkins. I'm going up again as soon as I take on some gas. No, I'm going with you, Skeeter. Okay. You go ahead. I'll take over the radio. Please fly west, Skeeter. 
It won't hurt the looking. Now, take it easy, kid. We've got no time to waste. It's been 12 hours since Tommy crashed, and... Well, we got to find him, quick. It looks bad. No, I'm going with him. Is he badly hurt? I don't know. I just found it. Tommy's in there, but... Come on. We gotta move this tree. Huh? <laughs> yes, it probably is. Well, you earned it, Whitey. 
If it hadn't been for you. If those other fellas hadn't been so dumb and listened to me, we could have found him sooner. I knew he was mixed up in that storm. Well, it was easy to do in a storm like that. Oh, sure. I wouldn't feel bad about it. It could happen to anybody. How are you, Tommy? Swell. After two weeks of this, I'll sure be glad to get out of here tonight. You were mighty lucky, Tompkins. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was lucky. Maybe it wasn't. Here it is, Tommy. Just came in on the transport. <laughs> Where's for Whitey? For me? Sure, open it up. Oh, boy, a model plane! And an honest-to-goodness gas engine! <laughs> like it? I'll say. Boy, I bet the other kids will be jealous when they see this. <laughs> Fly. You see, fellas, what I've been trying to get through your thick skulls? You gotta get the center of gravity just right. Not too far forward and not too far back. Whitey certainly has taken charge of those boys. Oh, Whitey's all right. He'll settle down in a few days. Yeah, I hope so, for your sake. He was such a swell fellow before the accident. Well, that's why we've got to be patient with him. He's been through enough to turn any kid's head. Pictures in the paper and reporters out here every day. That sort of thing has ruined many a grown man. Why, he's just a kid. So that's the kid brother who's been acquiring all this fame. Yeah, that's what I've been telling you, see? That kid's chest's out of foot with all this hero bunk and his being in soft with Tompkins. Now all we got to do is shuffle our cards right and we deal ourselves right in on that payroll dough. Yes, and if my memory serves me correctly, you had another perfect plan for acquiring this money. Yeah, yeah, I know. Perhaps. You leave the kid to me. I know how to work on him. Okay, fellas. I'll be off for today. Hello, kid. Hi, Mike. Say, did you see the papers? You bet I did. Pictures of you and everything. Say, I was so proud I nearly busted. How you been doing otherwise? Eating, sleeping okay? Yeah, I'll say. I've been staying with Benny Lou. You know, uh, Telspin's girlfriend. Well, smart kid. Come on, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Oh, no, if it's a reporter, I don't want to see him. I'm sick of news hounds bothering me and asking me questions. <laughs> this is no reporter, this is a big shot. Come on. Dawson, this is my kid brother. Oh, how do you do, young man? I've read a great deal about you. Yes, I guess a lot of people heard about me. Yes, indeed, young man. That was a most noteworthy accomplishment. Most noteworthy. And uh, is this the uh, sturdy plane with which you signaled for help? Well, uh, the other one didn't have a motor. Oh, most interesting, young man. Tell me, can you learn very much about the art of flying from these little planes? You bet. You see? Me and Tailspin, we figure that the kids can learn a lot of groundwork. Then when they get old enough to go up, they'll know what it's all about. Very good. Very good. I believe your brother's idea may prove quite profitable. Yeah, I was telling him there's a fortune in making these things. Quite right. Quite right. You see, I'm a manufacturer of uh, toys, and your brother has been trying to persuade me to make quite a number of these planes. Thousands, in fact. Of course, I would call them the Whitey Lewis Scout Ships, and uh, we would pay you for the use of your name. Yeah, but you couldn't sell them, unless the kids that bought them had some kind of a secret club. You know, some sort of signal. If one of you got in a jam, he could use it, see? And the others would know that it was a pal in trouble. You mean a secret code? Like the G-Men or the Army, huh? Possibly, yes, but it would have to be absolutely secret to be used only in case of life or death. Oh, that'll be easy, Mr. Dawson. Me and Tailspin will figure out something. Tailspin? Yeah, Tailspin Tommy, the pilot I rescued. Listen, kid, I wouldn't say nothing to nobody about your deal with Mr. Dawson. Big businessmen don't like a lot of people in on what they're doing. Oh, no, I won't say anything about it. I'll just tell Tailspin about the idea for the signal, see? Okay, kid.
Just like a sky rider, huh, Tommy? Seems to be working fine. It's a pretty good idea. How'd you come to think of it? I was thinking how close Betty Lou and Skeeter nearly missed seeing my plane. You know, when you crash. It's sure to come to me. <laughs> well, no pilot will ever miss a signal like that. And the scout on the ground will give the three-port call letters. That's the idea. Then the pilot will know it's one of our boys. Yeah. Twin Rivers to Three Point. Twin Rivers to Three Point. Three Point to Twin Rivers. Three Point to Twin Rivers. Go ahead, Twin Rivers. Flight 14 clearing Twin Rivers. Due 3.357. Advise Tompkins. Okay, Twin Rivers. Brown's payroll's on flight 14. I'm going to tell Tommy. I'll put the smoke signal on the other fellow's planes and teach him the call signal. All right. But remember to warn them it's only to be used for an emergency. A matter of life or death. Sure. I'll put them on their honor. Hey, Tommy. Oh, no way. Flight 14 just left Twin Rivers. You better get that flying tank ready. Okay, I'm all set. And you gotta know which way you're flying today, boy. If you get lost with that payroll, they'll have the G-men on you. <laughs> so long, Whitey. So long. Mind if I use the phone? Of course not. Who is she? I'm jealous. It's my brother Mike. He told me to call him up at Pete's place. I didn't know he was back in town. Yeah, he's been back a couple of days. Hello? Pete's pool pop. Uh, is this Pete? Well, yeah. I'd like to speak to Mike. Yeah, Mike Lewis. But I bet you I could have a girl, see? I got a couple of letters from them pictures in the papers. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Tell a big shot I'm all set to talk business. Okay. I'll meet you there. So long. My, that sounded important. Oh, that's nothing. Just a little business deal I got on. So long. <laughs> Bye. Very interesting young man. And of course you've worked out the emergency signals with the three-point call letters. That's right. But they're only to be used in case of uh, life and death. Quite right, quite right. A very wise provision, eh, Mike? Yeah, I told you the kid was smart. The more I see of this sturdy little plane, the more I'm convinced it'll bring us quite a sum of money. Sure, it's in the bag. That's swell, Mr. Dawson, and uh, you think it'll make me rich, huh? No doubt, no doubt. Rich and famous. Especially famous. Say, this looks like a good spot to test the kid's crate. Perfect. Perfect. And that mountain meadow, that'll provide a nice landing field in case your plane encounters trouble. Sure. That's big enough for a regular plane to make a forced landing. This is it. Well, here we are, young man, at the great crossroads of your life, perhaps. Say, we better get going. Quite right. Williams, I want you to take the car down there and wait for Whitey's plane to come to you. He says he'll drop it right in your lap. Is that right, my boy? That's right. Hold it. I'll go with you. All right. Better stall a few minutes. That transport should be landing at three point about now. Yeah, a nice autograph, Tompkins, for a lot of money. Yeah, too much for my autograph. <laughs> Happy landing. Good luck.
I'll board a ship fly in a minute at uh, 120 miles an hour. I don't know. Let's see. Uh... Uh, skip it. I guess it's time. All right, give me the blood. Okay, I got it right here. Don't you think them fellas are ready by now? Why, yes. I didn't realize it's been so long. Hey, look! What, what's happened? What look. happened to you? What the, what happened to you? The brakes didn't hold. We went off the road into the canyon. I think Mike's hurt bad. Here, help me put him in the shade of this tree. We gotta get a doctor, Mr. Dawson. Do you think he's gonna die? I hope not. Here, let me have a look at you. Oh, don't worry about me. Get help for Mike. I'll go. But it's 30 miles, my boy. That means hours. And your brother may be dying. But, but there's nothing else we can do. It's a plane. It's a plane, maybe from Three Point. Too bad he isn't low enough to see us. He could get your brother to town, perhaps in in time. Wait, wait until he gets closer, and maybe I can tell who it is. It's Tailspin. I'll get him. I'll get him down. Tompkins. Three point to Tompkins. Go ahead, Tommy. Over Long Meadow. He spotted plane with smoke attack. There's a kid signaling for help. Looks like one of our gang's in trouble. Well, Whitey's the only kid with a smoke gag. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to land and check up. Stand by, will you? Okay, but set her down easy. You know, that's not hay you're flying. What are you doing up here? My brother. He's all busted up. Car crack up. It, it went off the road. Well, are you all right? Sure, yeah. I wasn't in it, but Mike. Where is he? Up on the road. He's hurt bad, Tommy. Come on, we got to get him to a doctor. Wait till I check with Skeeter. Tompkins to Three Point. Tompkins to Three Point. Okay, Tommy. Go ahead. Hello, Skeeter. Landed okay. There seems to be a... What is this, a hold-up? Tommy's been held up. Call the sheriff. Get busy on that phone. I'll get a ship ready. Well, Skeeter. Yeah. Skeeter, that miniature plane. Well? Tommy said it had a smoke attachment. Yeah? Well, it was Whitey's. Well, sure, sure. Quit stalling and get the sheriff well, on the listen, phone. Listen, Skeeter. Whitey called his brother about four hours ago right from this phone. Well, all right. So what? Well, I'm trying to tell you. He said, tell the big shot I'm all set to talk business. What? Tell that to the sheriff. Take it easy and you won't get hurt. Easy, easy. Don't be a sap. 
You'd be a lot less trouble to us cold. You lied to me. You framed me. And I'm your brother. Lay off. Get wise to yourself. Yes, kid, you've done a fine job. You'd better forget the act. But I didn't have anything to do with this. You gotta believe me, Tommy. You gotta. You gotta. Pipe down, kid. You're it, and Squawkin ain't changing it. I'll handle him. Come here. Oh, so you'd plug me, huh? Yeah. I don't care if you're my brother. And that's the best description I can give you of the Lewis brothers. All right. That's all we need. I want all the roads leading on a long metal block. Yeah, but if they can force Tommy to fly them, they'll try to get out of there. I got a ship all ready to take off. That's good. Jim, you fly with Skeeter. Keep in touch with me with your radio. Right. You better contact all airports and all planes that you can reach in the air. Give them the description of Tompkins' plane. Three point to Twin Rivers. You dumb fool, why'd you hit him so hard? We could have been miles away from here and flying fast. Okay, forget it. We can't stall around here all day. Now we'll have to use the car. What'll we do with him? Bring him along and we'll dump him somewhere tonight. If we leave him here, he'll give our descriptions to the first sheriff's posse that gets here. And get rid of the plane. You probably smeared your fingerprints all over it. Hurry up! Car 65, car 65, Cover Hill Junction on road 105. Car 70, go to Andrews, cut off. That is a description of Lewis Brothers, but another man, possibly two, believed implicated in robbery. No description of them as available as yet. That's the last open road out of here. We'll have to pick a spot and crash through. That's just what those cops have been waiting for. Well, where to? Back to the cabin. By the time they search these hills, we'll have found a way to slip through. in Lone Meadow, it's, it's burned. I'm landing to investigate. Oh, here, here now, keep your chin up. Those crooks wouldn't go that far. We'll find Tommy. But I wish the officers had a description of the men with Mike and Whitey. It would certainly help. It's almost six o'clock. Any news? No, no, not a word all night. The sheriff thinks the gang must have slipped through the net last night. Yeah, maybe so. Well, I'm going up again. I can see now. Oh, Skeeter, you're all in. Well, you were flying most of the day yesterday. And you've been awake all night. I'm all right. What if they did slip through the blockade? Well, don't worry. They didn't take Tommy with him. Oh, you, you don't think they... Listen, Tommy's the only one who can put a finger on those crooks, and until we get them or find Tommy, anything can happen. Well, by tonight, those coppers ought to be sick enough of their jobs to ease off and we can slip through. How about that eagle and the kid? Are they going with us? No, we leave them down in a cellar. Yeah, they'll sing to the first copper that... They won't sing, not after we leave them. You think it'll fly? I don't know, kid. Pretty badly busted up and we haven't got much to work with here. It's because you know a lot about fixing them things. Yeah. When I started fooling around with the kids at the field, I didn't think one of these little ships might be getting us out of a tough spot. Well, it got you into it. That my dumb swell-headed... Oh, forget it, Whitey. We all make mistakes. 
Then you do believe me, don't you? You know I wasn't trying to help them to frame you. Sure. How many times have I got to tell you? Well, somehow I just can't believe you think so. Not on the level, Tommy. Things look too bad again, me. Oh, Cat, I tell you why I don't believe you. That's great. Now I don't care what them thugs do to me. They're not going to do anything to either one of us if we can get this wing to hold together in the air for a couple of minutes. It's kind of wobbly. Yeah. But it'll hold, kid. Don't you worry for one minute. Now all we got to do is to figure some way to get this thing in the air when we hear one of those patrol planes overhead. But how are we going to do it? I don't know yet, but I've got an idea. It's a plane. All right, Whitey. Hand me your ship. Wait a minute, Tommy. I'll fix it. That lady? Sure. All right, then I'll make enough noise so they won't hear the motor start. Cut that out down there. sees it, everything will be okay. He's going further away. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he didn't see it. Three point. Calling sheriff's office. Calling sheriff's office. Just spotted kids plane with smoke attachment. Must be Whitey Lewis's. It looks like signal for help. Child's model airplane, ship circling over exact location. John Cabin near Crest Road, one mile beyond Pine Flats. Well, 
Well, kid, there's one more thing we might try. I'm game for anything. I know you are, Whitey. And I don't think they'd hurt you. Or I wouldn't take the chance. Oh, don't worry about me. But what about you? That's a chance we gotta take. We gotta get one of them down here. Hand me that club. Didn't I tell you to cut that out? Ask for some water. Give us some water! Pipe down! Williams, take that kid some water. And Dawson, remember, no matter what happens, that kid goes with us. All right, Mike. I guess it would be better if we took him along. Yeah, much better. Like a million. It's Mr. Brown's reward for what Whitey did to help catch those crooks and save all that money. Isn't it swell? You bet. But it's no more than you deserve. <laughs> you know, I understand the head of Whitey's school is going to organize a branch unit of the Air Scout. He says it'll spread to lots of other kids' schools all over the country. And they're going to make you national commander. Ooh, General Tailspin Tommy Tompkins. <laughs> He'll be famous. Hey, cut the kitty. <laughs> Say, now, after all, wait a minute. I did help catch those crooks, you know. What do I get out of it? Here's your reward, Skeeter. Hey, wait a minute, Skeeter. Hey, come on, you kids. Time to get Flight 14 out of here. Okay. Come on. 